Hey Nick, so uh, Limp Loser brought up determinism and I'm glad because I wanted to get into that as well but I, I stayed away because I know you said that uh, you didn't want to touch determinism. But now that it's on the table, um, I think the short answer is that both freedom and determinism apply to that I or ego or separate sense of identity that we wanted to get rid of. Uh, and so short answer is, of course, it's not all um, faded, but just like it's not free, because there's no I to be free or to be faded. Um, but, you know, that's kind of a cop-out maybe, so the longer answer is that uh, our understanding of physics and biology at this point are not conducive to um, a mechanical or a deterministic um, understanding. Because, well, quantum physics, first of all, shows that at the, uh, the smallest level, um, particles travel in probability waves. And we can never know, even in principle, where a particle will be until we measure it. And when we measure it, we can only know part of its position. Uh, or part of its, uh, of where it is. Uh, we can't know both its position and its velocity at the same time. Uh, the more we know where it is, the less we know how fast it's going. And the more we know how fast it's going, the less we know about where it is. And that is not an issue of not having the technology to measure appropriately. No, it's uh, a fact about how the physical world behaves at that level. And certainly quantum physics is unfinished, and uh, we don't know exactly where it's pointing us, whether it's um, going to be completely reworked. But as far as physics knows right now, um, the universe is not deterministic. Um, it's not as though we have separate objects that bang into each other, and if only we had a computer fast enough to keep track of all these objects banging into each other, that we could then predict what's going to happen next. Um, the universe is much weirder than that. Particles pop into and out of existence randomly. Um, they're connected at a distance, non-locally. Um, and so we can't look at the physical world as being determined. At the molecular level, the level of biology, we say that, uh, you said that still we can look at, uh, we can look at this as a mechanism. Um, a biological organism's activity, its metabolism, uh, its, its life, it can't ever break physical law. And that's true, but biologists, system theorists, they have this notion um, of emergence, which means that um, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, and that we could not predict what the parts are going to emerge into, what the global property they will produce will be, before it happens. In other words, we cannot look at the past, the positions and velocities of all the molecules and particles, and predict the emergent property. The emergent property occurs, and then it seems obvious, but beforehand we never could have predicted it. Um, and this, this phenomenon of emergence, it doesn't require a soul or anything metaphysical, it's just something inherent to the complexity of the physical world that we thought used to think of back in Newton's time and even Einstein thought of it this way as you know a bunch of pieces colliding together and based on certain laws exhibiting some uh, behavior that can it is very predictable um, but it turns out the physical universe is not as predictable uh, as we as we thought um, probabilistically we can sort of gauge the direction it's going but ultimately we cannot predict the new types of emergence that will occur. Um, and so it's inherently undetermined. It doesn't mean it's free. It doesn't mean there's you know a mind or a spirit or a soul controlling it from the inside out. Uh, it just means that we live in a, a place in the natural world where spontaneity is actually possible. Um, it's not spontaneity that is controlled by free will, but it happens. It just happens of itself. Um, and I think, you know, when we talk about this 1090, and you said that if we could, in principle, know the entire past of this 1090 machine, we could predict what it would do next. But uh, the issue, uh, I think, is that we really can't predict what it's going to do next. 
um, because to stop and take a, a time slice of this moment and say, ah, this moment was caused by the past, well, really, it's an abstraction that doesn't exist in this reality because you can't stop time and say this moment was caused by the past because, no, it's still going on. The moment is passing and unfolding continually. And for you to, you know, abstract from that ongoing development and say that uh, right, right there, that was all determined by the past. The problem is you've already moved on to the next moment and that next moment has already changed how the past uh, has been remembered by the 1090 and so there's really no um, sense trying to say that it's all determined by the past because the past is always being changed by the present and the present is always moving forward regardless of when you decide to draw the line between when you're going to measure you know how this particular behavior uh, was caused by a past experience or whatever um, so I'll leave it at that, try to keep it short. Hopefully this helped. Hopefully uh, we'll make some more progress on this and this isn't going to bring us backwards. So thanks for listening.